Good day to you and welcome to another Paddock's Club tutorial. This tutorial arises from a question asked by Roger Reinders of Pretoria on the discussion forum. It deals with electronic communications and transactions in community scheme management. The fundamental question is can we use email in internet communications? The video tutorial is designed for owners, trustees and managing agents in all types of community schemes. I'll give you a quick overview. With the growth of email usage and, and e-commerce generally, people feel uneasy about the legality uh, and the legal consequences of agreements concluded online. So the questions are, can valid contracts be concluded online? What if contracts or notices must be in writing? And what if they are required to be signed? Let's first look at the validity of the agreement. Can a valid contract be concluded between parties by electronic communications? Well, the Electronic Communications and Transactions Act, number 25 of 2002, applies, and Section 11.1 determines that no data message is without legal force and effect, merely because it is in the form of a data message. Um, this means that any offer and acceptance may be made by means of an electronic data message unless other formalities are required. This is also confirmed by Section 22 that says that no agreement is invalid only because it was concluded in part or wholly by way of data messages. The validity of electronically concluded contracts is unquestioned when there is a communication between the parties that adequately shows their intention to contract. What if writing is required by law or a binding provision? Well, there are South African statutes that require formalities in respect of various types of, of uh, agreement or communications. An in instance of this is the Alienation of Land Act, which requires that a contract for the alienation or sale of land be in writing and be signed by the parties. It's also not uncommon for parties themselves, in terms of their agreements, to require that they be reduced to writing or that changes be so reflected in writing. An agreement may require that certain actions, also notices, etc., be given in writing. The ECT Act in Section 12 deals with this in general and says that a requirement in law that a document or information must be in writing is met if the document or information is in the form of a data message and is accessible in a manner usable for subsequent reference. This means that the data message can, that can be displayed on a computer screen or a cell phone screen are considered writing as long as the data message re remains available for subsequent reference. This qualification serves to provide legal certainty because if a data message is sent in a form so transitory that it can't be saved for later reference, then it can't be relied on. And what about signatures? <clears throat> we'll talk about both electronic and advanced electronic signatures. Um, subsection 13.1 of the ECT Act says that where a signature of a person is required by law, and such law does not specify the type of signature, that requirement in relation to a data message is only met if an advanced electronic signature is used. So what is that? Well, it's a special sort of arrangement set up under the auspices of an accrediting authority established in terms of the ECT Act. The scheme will clearly know of and have made special arrangements for this type of signature. Where this type of signature is being used, it's considered valid unless the contrary is proved. <coughs> Subsection 13.2 of the ECT Act says that subject to one, um, that is at, where advanced uh, signatures are required by law, no signatures without legal force in effect merely because it is in electronic form. That's very important. Um, where an electronic signature is required by the parties to an electronic transaction and the parties haven't agreed on the type of electronic signature to be used, that requirement is met in relation to a data message. If a method is used to identify the person and to indicate the person's approval of the information communicated, and having regard to all the relevant circumstances, the method that was used is as reliable as is appropriate for the purposes for which the communication was intended. So this is a situation where the parties, not the law, require signature, uh, but the type of signature is not agreed, then any method that is as reliable as is appropriate will work. So what is an ordinary electronic signature? It's an electronic signature 
uh, in the form of data, which is attached to it or incorporated in, logically associated with other data, and is intended by the user to serve as a signature. With regard to recognition of electronic signatures, an electronic signature has legal force and effect. So let's have a quick summary. The ECT Act draws a distinction between two types of electronic signatures. Only an advanced electronic signature satisfies the requirements when a signature is required by law, and the law does not specify the type of signature required. When there are no formal legal requirements and the parties have not agreed otherwise, an ordinary electronic signature is valid and binding. Um, and in terms of subsection 13.5 of the ECT Act, where an electronic signature is not required by the parties to the uh, transaction, an expression of intent or other statement is not without legal force and effect merely because it's in the form of a data message or because it's not evidenced <coughs> by an electronic signature but is evidenced by some other form um, which, from which the person's intent can be inferred. So if there's no other agreement or applicable law, data messages that show intent to be bound have legal effect. Thank you very much for joining me. I look forward to chatting to you further on the discussion forum.